And it's map review time, everybody. And today we're on snake water. So, you all know how it goes. Uh, we're going to start with the rollout mid-fight. And then get uh, going on each of the points. Going coast to coast. So, for starters, the rollout. Uh, you roll out right spawn. And you want to be landing in lobby. You can hit a ramp slide to land a little deeper in lobby, which is a little better, um, just objectively speaking, but it really doesn't matter that much. Um, and then from here, you're tasked with a decision. Uh, most of the time, people will roll out here if they're rolling out saw, hit this ramp slide, which I think that was actually just a ramp bug, some offline or something. Um, but you can strafe off this ramp slide and land pretty deep in saw. And then from here, you're going to be charging your first sticky, getting the pack, and then usually either shooting at their saw or their lower. Um, usually with the first sticky, I like trying to tag the demo because uh, you're going to show up much earlier than the other team. And if you shoot it, um, like landing near their saw, then a scout is just going to clear that before walking through. So it's not really going to do anything. Uh, versus if you, you know, try and hit their demo with the first sticky and then time that sticky for when they get through, you can be deading as they're, they're walking through. But that's uh, for rolling out to mid uh, through saw through the bridge doorway. So again, you just want to be hitting this ramp slide and landing towards saw. Now you can, of course, roll out. Well, you can roll out saw through cheese as well. Uh, this is what I do, and this is just a crouch debt, um, which pretty simple, and you can land equally, and in some cases even deeper. Um, and one optimization I've actually seen, because actually on Snake, this is a rollout in which you show up quite healthy, all things considered, uh, because you're gonna be you're gonna be full buff, you know while leaving the shutter. So you're probably going to be full HP when you're in lobby. Um, so this pack is often overkill. And in fact, I have seen demos with the uh, with the cheese rollout with the crouch that actually throw an extra sticky in uh, just to show up a little bit faster. Um, you won't be full HP. So there is a trade off associated with it, but uh, can be a nice thing if you just want that extra bit of speed uh, oftentimes as well like if i'm landing particularly deep i actually just won't even crouch that um but you do have to make sure that a lot of the time like when you're and let's see if i can't just demonstrate this with a full rollout to, to show what i mean you have to be mindful of your ammo because you can show up with seven sticks rather than eight depending on uh how you do it so if i started charging too early there then i would only have seven sticks you just have to be a little cautious about that. Uh, but yeah, that's the two saw rollouts. Now you can, of course, roll out lower, which, you know, whatever sticky, you pretty much just jump to lower. You can avoid fall damage on this pallet just by ramp sliding it. A lot of the time you don't even need to, though, because this pack will top you off more often than not. And then, of course, you're just showing up this way. And yeah, it's, it's another way to roll out to mid. They're both just as good, in my opinion. Um... The lower rollout does give you a more intuitive first sticky, I'll say. Because a lot of the time, a demo... Well, there's there's not guaranteed anyone going to be saw necessarily. I don't know. It, they don't matter that much. It's just what you kind of want to go for. Um, up to you and personal preference. Um, so with those rollouts in mind, let us talk about the mid-fight. And of course, again, I do have an entire video dedicated to how to play every mid fight on every map as demo, excuse me, which you can check out um, if you want more detail. But essentially, um, you are gonna be playing pretty centrally, kind of where I'm standing right now. And your main goals are gonna be getting damage across point if you can. So getting damage on like their demo or their med or players like standing in this area is gonna be nice. Um, likewise, it's not uncommon for a scout to be positioned on the shed, maybe a soldier up here. The flank might be around this corner. 
playing this spam, something like that. Um, all, all these places are things you can shoot at. You can, of course, shoot at scouts on the shed. I am a big fan of just that blind sticky in that corner to hit the flank. Um, and that's actually a pretty consistent way to just hit them for a stick. And if those players aren't buffed, then like suddenly that soldier might be, you know, 160, maybe even less HP um, before their bomb. And that's just a, a much less comfortable uh, health to be at. So that's a lot of utility in that. Of course, you can be shooting at a soldier up there as well. And just all those players. Assuming everyone's in pretty normal, pretty... Uh, I don't want to say passive, but uh, just kind of standard positioning. Now, your primary jobs, if uh, that, that's your that's your main goal when nothing's happening, when neither team wants to bomb, and sometimes this game state continues for a long time, uh, where neither team really wants to commit to a bomb. Snakewater mid in general is kind of defined by a commit. Um, so you either are committing forward with bombs, or you are not, and you are playing just kind of the passive standard positioning. And if both teams are playing that standard positioning for a very long time, then this game state can continue for a very long time. So definitely focus on your ammo management on this mid, uh, more so than the other mids, because you will be playing a lot of charged stickies and a lot of uh, reloading those stickies. So just stay mindful of that. And this is also a mid where it's very important to have ammo loaded for if the other team's trying to commit, because you don't know when that might be happening, and you don't want to be caught with only like one or two stickies to your name when the other team is bombing you and, and walking across the point. Now that being said, when the other team is bombing you and walking across the point, and by you I mean you know the team, not necessarily you specifically as the player, your primary job is to stop the aggression across point. And this applies just throughout. There are going to be some times where a demo might take, like an enemy demo might take an aggressive avenue somewhere, or like just a player will take an aggressive avenue in a lane or something, and your job is to stuff that. Uh, likewise, the second I see soldier bombs going off, my first intuition is, you know, start shooting at their demo so their demo can't walk across. Because if these soldiers double bomb into you guys, um, it's something that your scouts and in some occasions your pocket soldier as well should be able to absorb a lot of the time. Um, at the very least, like you're getting the two picks for it. So as long as your med like plays to, to kite properly and survives the bomb, then you're actually quite happy with that. And honestly, if you get committed on as a demo and you die, but both soldiers die, it's actually totally worth it. And in fact, like advantageous for your team uh, to take that trade, you're likely to win the mid at that point. Um, but the way to make those bombs ineffective and the way to prevent those bombs from, from getting a lot of value, at least from for your responsibility as the demo, is making it so that uh, they can't be crossing into your team doing a lot of damage. So just uh, playing those sticks on point, playing to damage the players trying to walk across point. Now you will have to kite that somewhat, and where you kite matters a lot. Um, and there isn't a straight answer of whether you want to kite back to saw or kite to lower. The objective best way to kite is to kite with your heels so there might be some mids where your heels roll out catwalk and you would play like a very kind of passive positioning towards uh towards catwalk and towards lower and this kind of catwalk mid is like very passive for if you've been you know having a lot of trouble dealing with their bombers and you're just trying to bait them into aggression on point and bait them into bombing and then punishing it uh with like a counter attack but even in like a standard standard mid, your med might be kiting towards saw to leave and might be kiting towards lower. It kind of depends, and um, it depends on not only the situation but kind of what they prefer and what your team prefers. So rule of thumb is you know don't wander away from your med and try and kite the opposite direction because you just won't have that healing support and you're gonna die more often than you would if you actually just kited towards your heels. Um, but yeah. And then, of course, when your team is committing, um, you can be getting aggressive with them. So you don't necessarily need to fully, fully cross the point and be on their side. You just need to be forward enough that you can kind of hit everything. And then from here, you just focus on, you know, doing your damage. And you can't even kite that back, potentially. Um, but where do you do this? So the primary places I like to be committing uh, with bombs are either across the point, as you saw, 
Um, and right lane can be quite nice as well because again, you're expecting the other team to either kite back saw or kite lower. If they kite lower, this is like a perfect shooting gallery for you, right? Um, so that can be quite nice. Now, what about left lane? So left lane is something you can find an aggressive timing in. This isn't a play you would be doing with a soldier, like double soldier commit um, or double soldier bomb necessarily. Uh, but more so something you can just find the time for is just pushing this kind of aggro, right? And there are some cases where like you can actually just be like sinking a lot of damage on a soldier there and maybe even just get a pick on them or just do a lot of damage to their scout back up. Now you're reloaded, that scout's weak. You maybe even as a team want to bomb off that, you know, because uh, that scout is not in a position to deny any soldiers, stuff like that. So that could be a nice uh, little aggressive timing to find. Uh, you do have to be careful though, because you are pretty exposed. And actually if other demos are doing that, what I like to do is get a little bit aggressive, just enough to kind of trap their exit. And then when they try and back up, you can just kill them. Um, so it's not without risk, but as long as you're like in and out, um, somewhat quickly, then you can just deal a lot of damage that they might not be expecting and get some value out of it. Um, okay. So outside of that huge thing to keep in mind is height control. Height control is one of the most important things on Snakewater mid. Anytime I see a player on height, I am shooting that player pretty much without exception. Um, unless there's literally like a demo in my face or something, or, you know, I need to look away. Otherwise everything's going to go catastrophically wrong. Then I really, really want to control this height. Um, because you know, the team with players on height are able to shoot down at everyone and just have like such a positional advantage. And you also do a shocking amount of damage to players on height. Like if I hit a scout, uh, on the shed, I'm expecting that to do like 50, 60 damage, but they're on the height, it feels, I know it's much closer, but it feels like a similar distance, right? Uh, but that guy's taking like 80 plus damage and it's not uncommon to just kill someone because a scout decided, okay, I'm just gonna like aggressively peek this real quick. Oh, I ate a sticky, I'm dead now. And then you just win the mid because you have a pick. Um, so shooting that height is important. And again, I, I do like that, uh, that blind sticky can be quite nice. Um, I've actually seen some invite demos. If you get like the timing down, um, for like the round timer because of course the round timer is kind of like a standardized timer on mid for everyone reaches the same approximate positions at the same approximate times assuming a consistent rollout um you could be like sinking a sticky and a pipe in this corner if someone's peeking it a little too aggro then uh they might just insta die not something i've really cooked with but uh, i know it's it's possible uh so yeah height control very important stopping the cross very important just normal demo things um, applied here to Snakewater mid, and it's a lot of just push and pull, uh, controlling that positioning. Okay, I don't know if I have any other notes for the mid fight, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to Disad Last. So Disad Last, as with any last, you always, always, always want to have the point trapped. Um, and how you do this is up to you. I am a fan of trapping the ceiling, um, just because it's harder to. Um, harder to knock away in many cases, and you can also be trapping this corner. It's going to be harder for a scout to see, maybe. Uh, there are all sorts of little places you can hide sticks. This can be a difficult point to hold sticks on, um, but you, you have some, some tricks at your disposal to do so. Because um, the kite can be a little long, but whatever. You always want to have traps on point no matter what. And where you play to kite is kind of up to you and your team. You can be playing on top of the point and kiting away from wherever they're using uh, towards spawn. And you usually won't be caught to that. Um, the benefit that this presents is the fact that uh, you can actually apply some form of pressure to whatever door they try and go. Um, while still not being caught, assuming that you really get out of there as soon as possible. Um, but it is a, it can be a little risky if the other team takes like a really, really fast Uber or their demos like has a good bomb or something. Um, so at a higher level, teams like to pick a side to play and kite to or kite away from. Um, I do like left side just because I like, you know, being able to potentially deny some spam from, or 
excuse me, spam the, the shutter and potentially like knock a sticky and ruin a demo's bomb or something. Um, plus, I am a fan of kind of baiting this door. And um, if there's someone baiting that door, then the other team's less likely to want to cross. They're going to want to kind of keep an eye on you. Now, one thing to mention is with the rotations, it's a very long way through spawn. Um, so I would not linger very long because you want to get out on the side that's safe as soon as possible. Um, but right side as well, totally fine. You're not going to get that same value um, out of potentially, you know, denying a, a demo bomb or, or spamming the, the shutter. But you do, you know, make it harder for the other team to dry through right, which some teams uh, are wont to do. But if you have a soldier on top of that door, then usually that's not uh, too big of a deal. But anyway, either side is fine. And your main objective is just to survive. And whichever side the combo is not ending on, you want to come out of. So if I kite this back here and I see through the, the window that their demo bombed over to the other side, I'm going to be calling to, and like gets chased by the medic or whatever. I'm calling that right is clear and to come out right, and then me and my team will come out right and then play the post from the right side. And if they're ending right, then, you know, rotate over and play left side. Left side, in my opinion, is much better for a post fight because not only can you shoot into the point very comfortably through this uh, hole here, but this truck is kind of awkward and makes it difficult to properly fight the point without committing pretty far out, all things considered. Because if we keep in mind, like, that's this line that I'm on, right, that I have to cross to really fight the point. I was like comfortably way back here and I'm much closer to the spawn if I need a resup or something. Um, but just a lot of room to work with here can be quite nice. But of course, when it comes to defending last disad, you don't really have the option of where you want to kite. It's really just in reaction to where the other team is positioned. Um, so yeah. That's disad last. Your main job, of course, is just controlling the point. Um, as far as traps go, I'll talk about that in the end um, with its own section. But yeah, disad last. Pretty straightforward on Snake. So uh, let's talk about evens on last. So when you have the gun set up uh, and everything in position, like dispenser, wherever, medic's going to be playing like around here. In some cases up here, but you can get um, shot by a sniper. If the sniper just takes a sudden peek, that could be it versus a med down here. They won't be able to see. Um, but your main job as the demo is watching right. Now, what do I want to talk about watching right? So for starters, um, I mean, just traps on the doorway are a nice thing to have. Just prevent people from getting through. Now, this is a door that it's not uncommon for a team's plan into last to be... There's kind of like three main plans teams will have. It's either try and spam down the gun from lower with your two soldiers. Um, try and pressure, like drop down and right side, maybe. Get the soldier off here, maybe peek, spam down a gun, do something, right? Or... Try and bust top right, where a soldier jumps and hits, tries to hit a speed shot through or something, or just a skip jump or what have you, and scout follows behind. And a lot of the time they're going to try and be rushing you uh, and trying to get that pick. Because if you die, a lot of the time they're actually going to be able to like kind of live in this area for a little bit. Uh, it's not going to be they're immediately trading to for the demo. So, um, as far as avoiding that, of course, traps on the door are are a good way to mitigate that. And I will see some demos trap even deeper as well because uh, it can be hard to react in time to a soldier speed shotting through with this set of traps, but this is gonna be more reliable. Uh, gives your reaction time more leeway. Uh, but also where you kite is really important. And you don't wanna be kiting back here because this is just gonna be isolating you from your heels and your gun and everything. You just want to be kiting around this corner, pretty much. And from here, you are, like, very, very safe. Uh, because the gun's going to be watching anyone trying to peek anywhere, like, over this. Um, and this is a very uncomfortable place for someone to be, right? Because they're, like, committed through the door, so they could get, like, 
juggled around and caught in from a bomb or something like that. And if they try and peek the gun, then like they're going to be taking some damage. They're going to try and spam it down or whatever. But keep in mind, you're still alive, so you can still be like doing things. Once you're reloaded, like you can start to retake this, right? Um, so kiting this towards your heels and kiting this um, more centrally is, is the best way to approach it. It's just very important that you survive. Um, but yeah, what else? What else? Um, a lot of the time, if they, like, for instance, speed shot a soldier past you, I wouldn't even focus on that guy a lot of the time and instead try to deny the pressure, um, as is, you know, a, a normal kind of uh, thing you do on demo, because a lot of the time there will be like a demo peeking from behind, trying to get some spam, maybe even take some space, um, just do all sorts of things top left. And if you are, you know, ready to kite any soldier aggression and stay alive getting tanked by your medic like if you are on the ball denying that in some cases you might be able to actually just kill a demo by uh catching them off guard with a lot of damage they weren't expecting so soon or maybe juggling someone in or you know you can be trapping someone off on this corner this corner here is your friend because um you can in effect just be standing here nice and cozy and just denying that vision from people just by repeatedly carpeting this. I, I'm a big fan of just having sticks carpeted here. Um, in particular against like a sniper. I suppose that's a subject change. Um, but just playing that vision, playing that corner uh, can be quite nice because you don't really have to allow them a peek and you are still like you're not dealing damage, but you're still getting a lot of utility out of just playing your reload um, and just forcing their scout to be also just constantly reloading, clearing these um, without anyone ever peeking. Um, right. So against the sniper, um, I do just play the carpet. I don't want to be peeking this angle because, you know, a sniper on bridge or a sniper on the logs is just really looking to kill you. Like the sniper peaks are going to be primarily into left um, or like drop down here or shutter. And in these cases, that's mostly a soldier's problem. Uh, I suppose maybe there's like a lower peak. I doubt it. They just get eaten by a soldier. Um, so yeah, the sniper peaks in the last are actually pretty limited. Um, you just kind of have to trust that your soldiers are on top of the left side so that, you know, that sniper peaking who maybe can't see your med because he's down there can see you and wants to kill you. Um, so there's some trust there, but I just hold this angle pretty much. And as long as, you know, I keep this carpeted enough, then a sniper is never going to be able to peek me and I'll be happy. Um, yeah, there are going to be times where you need to get ammo from the dispenser or something. And then you have to be a little careful about the sniper catching a timing and potentially like already being in peeking. But a lot of the time, if you're, if you're playing that correctly, then you can in fact just catch them and kill them. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of nuance actually to, to how you hold this door. Um, you just don't want to be feeding in it and you pretty much just want to be denying them. There are times where you can be getting maybe even aggressive if the other team is trying to pressure right or something. I wouldn't be like committing into lobby and you of course have to be extremely careful about whether this is trapped or not. But uh, you can be potentially getting some pressure um, and some spam as they're you know all situated around lobby just doing things and just interrupting their pressure in and of itself can be kind of valuable just to waste more time because of course on last a round reset does favor you a lot and the fewest uh, sacking attempts they can get within the allotted time uh, just benefits you okay so i think that's it for evens on last um that's for getting sacked into by the way for where you're expecting the other team to pressure so for counter sack most of the time you're just going to be entering lobby and there are multiple places you can be looking to pressure. So for starters, a lot of the time, you know, if their demo is playing pretty um, aggressively or just like playing to lock out lobby from bridge, then you're going to have a very tough time. And a lot of the time, the best you can do is maybe trade damage with that guy. Also, there's often going to be a soldier here spamming this. Um, so, you know, for some counter sack pressures, Excuse me, you just won't be able to do a bunch. But 
getting any type of valuable damage on players on point could be nice. Uh, this is actually a, a decent spam angle through which you can get some some nice stickies on where you'd expect the other team to be standing. Um, yeah, pretty pretty simple. The, the counter sack pressure is really not great. Um, one thing as well as the bucket trap. People think this is just like the noob trap that uh, you don't die to if you're a good player. But it... <laughs> okay, I kind of agree to be honest because, you know, it should just be cleared every single time no matter what. There's really no reason... Anytime I'm entering lobby and trying to peek, I'll always just shoot a stick in front, just knock anything away. But it's still worth setting when you're defending, in my in my opinion, because, like, worst case scenario, they clear it, and it's like, whatever, that, that was functionally no different than just the carpet. But in the odd case where, you know, they aren't expecting it, or, you know, maybe assume that it was already dealt with, that's not exactly my best work, but... Um, it. It gets kills. I mean, it, it does. So, not a terrible trap to set. Maybe I should be talking about that more in the trap section. But, um, yeah. I think that's it for evens on a last here. Oh, man. This is going to be a long video, I can tell. So, now let's talk about pushing out of last. Um, dry pushing snake water uh, second is really really difficult snake water second is actually notoriously difficult to push in general um for a couple of reasons i mean it's very easy to refight with just how open lower is and also it's been tweaked a bit but just the spawner there's the spawn timers on last and the spawn timers on the forward spawns kind of line up to where refights are pretty easy to do so you see a lot of snake water rounds that are won and lost off a team failing to push out a last or attempting to push out a last and it goes catastrophically wrong. Um, but with that being said, dry pushing really ill-advised unless you have picks. Um, but if you do, you're either going to want to be going bats or bridge. Um, bats is something you can be helping to clear the sticks on, but uh, you're really just waiting for your soldier and scout to get through and confirm that it it's not trapped in order to get through yourself and then from here of course all the things that you do uh when you take a new point of you know just trying to trap things out uh prevent a refight from the other team um, all sorts of things like that um your other option is just to pop out again this can be bridge or bats most of the time i just go bridge and it's very difficult to catch players from my experience um because a lot of the time the combo is going to be very far away there may be like soldiers caught close, but it's very difficult to get damage on soldiers um, in like an Uber um, on demo from my experience. Maybe I'm just bad, but uh, usually it, it feels like they can jump away by the time my stickies are actually um, active and it can be very difficult. This is also a last or an Uber where it's extremely easy to over bomb and end up dying. So you have to be very careful about like landing in lower because you're not getting reflashed. Um, so it's, you know, you are in extreme danger doing that. Um, sometimes you can get a lot of value in kills with the bomb, but a lot of the time it is kind of just like a flip-flop sort of situation. Um, but yeah, that's pushing out a snake wire last. It sucks, but uh, still got to do it. So uh, what else now? Let's talk about disadd on two. So Disadd on 2, you're pretty much going to be playing to leave bats most of the time. And from here, um, Iron Bombers actually. I'm a big fan of uh, of stock actually on this map. I like the uh, the stock rollers in particular for spams like spamming into lower or spamming across mid. Uh, just that extra range from stock can be nice. Lock, of course, is uh, solid as well. But anyway, um, yeah, you're just playing to leave bats. You know, you can have traps up all sorts of different places. You have to be worried about lingering here because, you know, soldiers are likely going to be, like, bombing from saw and trying to fade and even just taking a bit of damage. Um, someone might be trying to wrap you from bridge or something. So just be careful about uh, when you're leaving. You don't want to linger too long for spam or to watch a trap or what have you. Um, but, yeah, pretty straightforward. Very difficult to get pressure or any type of valuable spam if you're just holding traps. Um which is maybe a case for just trapping the doorways so that you actually get to use stickies on their approach is a realization I'm now making, but uh, whatever. 
So let's disadd on two. Let's talk about evens on second. So, for starters, where you typically want to be standing, I'm a fan of standing like here in this area. So there's a couple things to note here. Uh, most of the time your med is going to be on the other side of the logs. So you have to take some care to actually go get healed by them. But most of the time if there's active fighting happening, you're not going to be here. This is kind of just your um, equilibrium. Or you're just, this is your, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This is like the base of operations, right? For when nothing's really happening quite yet. Um, from here, you just have vision of lower. You can be shooting into lower. You can potentially be shooting into window or what have you. And you're also on a good avenue to set up a sink for saw. So basically, you just play to rotate wherever the enemy combo pressures. So if it's lower, then you're going to be playing to spam lower. And most of the time, you're not going to be able to linger here um, because it's a very confined space and pretty easy to get spam onto you from, you know, not only a demo or a soldier lower, but also just like a soldier window can be peeking this and spamming this. And this is something that, uh, you know, uh, an enemy soldier might be doing even before the other team's pressuring. So you be mindful of that. Um, a lot of the time you're going to be rotating over wide to adequately uh, spam out saw, right? Um, and not just like stuck in this box. So there is a bit of a rotation time where you don't see them, but of course you can still be shooting everything just the same from over this. Um, and then from here you have a lot more vision. You are of course like way further committed away from saw and not in a position to fight saw, but that's fine because their combo's here, right? And they would take a long time to get to saw as well. Um, and then of course if they pressure saw, then you can rotate over and then be denying that. Um, and this is usually where I like to kind of stand at, on the side of the logs with my med, where I can actually get healed. And I'm a big fan of uh, throwing off sinks in this door, because a lot of the time teams will think, like, oh, well, a lot of the time demos will be like way pushed up here, which, of course, if you can get valuable damage into Saw without taking too much yourself, then that is nice. But a lot of the time, if teams, you know, maybe spam a soldier off of pipe or something, or they're trying to take some space here, Oh, I don't see a demo here yet. Like the the pressure is still early, and they might think they can commit even further out, get better spam, and then boom, they just take 200 damage in an instant. Um, Sinks can get a lot of value on this corner uh, against teams that are kind of careless with taking this space, because even when you're over here, you can still be very adequately denying this space uh, with spam, and they have to respect that. Otherwise, you should be rolling them. Uh, but yeah, you're pretty much just playing to rotate saw um, or rotate lower, depending on where the other team goes. As far as counter sat goes, um, you can pressure saw or pressure lower. Um, again, the pressure is not going to be that great, and you're expecting saw to be pretty trapped up, so I very rarely walk through first. Um, and sometimes you can peek into mid a little bit through this door. And by that, I mean, like, kind of what I'm doing now, because it's very difficult to be actually, like, peeking this doorway without eating a ton of damage. Um, and then lower, you're going to get a better peek off, but it's much further away, so you're looking more for, like, a charge sticky type of deal with your pressure. Um, counter sack pressure isn't fantastic, but uh, those are the main two places you can do it. It's just important that you're with your combo and communicating with your combo on where you guys want to go to, to pressure counter sack. Uh, yeah. What else? What else for a second? I think that's about it. Uh, we talked about disad, evens. Yeah, let's talk about pushing out of second. So, pretty much any door, um, there is a purpose for. So, wide saw is fine for both drying through and popping. Um, uh, and again, this is a doorway I very much like to knock stickies from, because a lot of the time my scout's gonna be a little slow anyway, clearing stuff. Um, and so I usually have the extra time to just knock any traps that might be up top and then, uh, just makes it easier for my team. And yeah, if you're trying to dry, then it's the, just the normal dry things of, you know, if there's any players out of position or trying to hold to any type of positioning, I'm going to spam them off and then I'm going to lock out, um, the space. Excuse me. Uh, let's keep talking dries. I'll come back to it when I talk about popping through. 
Um, catwalk is a popular dry push. Now you do have to worry about uh, this trap here. Um, and often, t I don't know if I knock this. Someone should be knocking this because of course you can't see it. Um, if it's set right, it is like com pretty much completely obscured. Uh, there's some like sticky RNG with how they get placed uh, for that one to stick out, but it can just be completely obscured. So an explosive needs to knock that spot if you're trying to dry push catwalk. Um, but yeah, similar thing, you know, just similar dry thing you're trying to get through, uh, take some space, spam those guys, you know, the order matters of people clearing traps and getting through and making the space for you and your medic to get through, but uh, same deal. And then lower, again, a door you can be dry pushing through, um, and all the same thing apply, you know, watch out for traps and let your players get through first, you come in after. Spam guys that are still forward and lock it out. Just normal dry push things. They apply to all these different doors. And they all function pretty similarly. Of course, this is just like... These doors are kind of further away. Um, but like the rotation into saw can be kind of nice. I don't know. I, they're all kind of valuable. A lot of the time I just go to the door that's closest. Uh, if we're trying to do something like that. If we have time though, I tend to go saw, I guess. It's preference. So, as far as popping through goes, popping through lower is not that great, uh, in my opinion, because you're so far away that, uh, like, you can imagine just one sticky jump, if I were to actually, like, do a proper jump. Like, one jump lands me over here, which is basically, like, at the entrance of Saw, right? Versus I can be jumping way further from there. So, you're already much closer um, when you're popping through something like Saw. Catwalk is... You can be bombing through this door, and it's not terrible. Um, but not something you're typically popping through. It, if you're already in Saw, a lot of the time, you're, if you're playing to pop through, it'd be through uh, wide. And then, of course, you can be popping through Kitchen. And this is... Yeah, just a fast... Uh, sort of deal where you're trying to catch some people off guard. Now, they can spot the rotation as well, like a player can spot the combo going kitchen and it's kind of obvious. So in some cases actually you can be um, faking that. You know, going kitchen is if you're going to use so that everyone backs up and no one on the other team's caught and then you actually dry lower when they're all out. Uh, but that's more of like a map review than I'm just a demo uh, specific thing. Uh, but yeah, where you want to bomb is going to matter because a lot of the time teams will play to leave kitchen on mid and I find that's very very exploitable and you can often get a lot of picks doing that uh, if you know in advance because if you just bomb towards kitchen it's not very hard for you to get reflashed your combo just needs to run up here and this little door can catch so many people because a lot of the time people think like if if I get through this door then I'm safe but nah you have to get through this door as well so you know a there might be players very committed without realizing they're very committed. Um, and then, you know, it's very difficult to miss a pipe as long as you time it to when they're walking through that, uh, that doorway. Um, so spotting is going to matter a lot into those Ubers into mid. If you can spot where their combo's at, and if you know they're playing to leave kitchen, then, you know, bombing to catch players there is going to be really nice. Otherwise, you know, teams are going to be... Uh, further back, and I suppose this is something you could be pogoing, um, theoretically, but you have to worry about getting reflashed, of course, because you don't want to be bombing too deep necessarily, um, but you can maybe catch some players out. Uh, but yeah, that's pushing into mid, so now let's talk about disadd on mid. So disadd on mid, you have a couple options. Um, I'll say two main options. You can, of course, be playing to leave kitchen. And as much as I just talked about how it can be very vulnerable leaving kitchen, um, it still can be valuable to leave there. Um, and it gives you a lot of vision and spam. Well, not only is the reason people leave kitchen because you get much closer spam on saw, so it's harder for them to dry through saw, but you also get vision and spam on lower as well versus the other spot, which is leaving Saw, you are so far away, you can basically do nothing against them leaving Saw unless 
I don't even know if Locke would have like a good angle because this is kind of in the way. Um, likewise, if they're going lower, then you're not even going to be able to see them until they're all the way pushed up and basically already have the point, right? Um, so you're going to have very, very, very ineffective spam on mid here. And another reason why I kind of like uh, stock on uh, on this map is because these rollers kind of... Uh, Get some, some spam damage at least, but whatever. Um, those are your main two avenues to leave. So I was just safer. I'll usually leave kitchen if... I mean, I'll, I'll like to leave where my combo's leaving, but uh, I will make particular care to leave kitchen if, for instance, I trapped, like, catwalk or have traps lower or something, or just traps that I want to spot. Um, I actually get to spot them here versus over here. It's just relying on a blind debt with context clues. Um, so yeah, that's disad. Uh, let's talk about evens on mid. And we'll start off with pressuring for a sack. So you can pressure lower or you can pressure saw. As far as pressuring saw goes, your main job is just spamming guys off the door. So you want to be spamming their demo off. Of course, all this stuff can be traps. You have to watch out. And, you know, spamming a guy off the pipe. You want to be slowly but surely working that space with damage and forcing the other team to back up and reheal, forcing soldiers to get packs, whatever. Now, of course, you do have to be very careful playing this corner, and I'm very slow to play. I, I, I like to play this methodically, so I'm not just caught to a sink or something or caught to just some random bomb. Um, I kind of like to play it more methodically. Uh, but yeah, you're just looking for, for damage on their demo, you're looking for damage on this guy, and if you are able to full peek this, then by all means, like, get that charge sticky damage on their medic, and just, you know, be a nuisance, more than a nuisance, just annihilate their team with charge stickies, and your sack should be really good. Um, but you won't always get that much space, and sometimes their demo's, like, playing really, really close, really aggro, um, and you can really only just trade damage with that guy without even necessarily even committing through this door. It all depends. Um, but yeah, let's talk about lower. So lower, okay, of course, again, watch out for traps. I really don't like being the first one through this door. Um, and if I can, like, spot maybe, um, you know, the edges of some stickies uh, without committing through the door, then by, I will absolutely be communicating that to my team. But... Um, Lower, you can more often take space in. Like, it's not even risky to commit through this doorway, at least to here. And in some cases, you might be able to push up even further um, into yard. So you can definitely be taking some space here. If their demo is walking, like, forward at you, then this is a target to focus because this is a very forward place for a demo to be, and you and your scout should be trying to maybe even get that kill. But again, your main job is the same as it would be for pressuring any sack. Excuse me. Which is get damage on the players that are going to deny your bomb. Um, so damage on the scouts on height if they're on the fence or shed or maybe even uh, back by the train. You can be hitting them. Uh, you know, you can hit a soldier on pipe, I suppose. It's not... A terrible, a terrible idea. Or, number two is get damage on the medic. Um, which, a lot of the time you're not going to be able to see the med, but uh, you can be shooting, you know, where he's standing from where you're standing, just by knowing, you know, where your stickies are going um, in the map. And just landing that approximate area. Uh, yeah, and those are the two ways to make your sack more effective, by either having the med be weak already, or by making the players that deny your bomb weak so they're less equipped to deny the bomb. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. Now, of course, there are going to be times if you get really good pressure that the other team's going to want to be playing an exchange. And if you see, like, maybe... Um, like, if like Demo is conceding a lot of space or really far back, and Demo could be forward in these situations as well. But if you can see... Man, it's hard to actually articulate particularly well but in those occasions where you're getting really good pressure you can kind of see it in the, the pocket scout pocket scouts eyes that he wants to kind of just run at you with an uber um, and force the exchange in order to alleviate the pressure 
So it does take some experience to kind of get a feel for that. But when you, when you are understanding that, uh, you know, they're looking for that exchange, then by all means, I like to stay far enough out of it that it's going to be bad for them if they take it. Um, or at the very least, we're going to have a much better Uber and be able to get the point as a result. Because um, if you see that scout trying to walk and then you are just trying to headbutt him and then uh, you take a lot of damage, forces your team to use Uber and, you know... It end the Ubers end without you having like a good positional advantage or like Uber duration advantage. Then a lot of the time, then um, that's just the pressure over or kind of reset. Um, so playing that positioning, baiting that exchange is an important aspect to pressuring lower on Snakewater too, and something to keep in mind. Uh, but with that, let's talk counter sack. So counter sack, I prefer demo playing saw, and you can kind of have like two sets of traps up because you can be watching and spamming into saw itself, and then when they get past that trap to take space saw, then they have to worry about this door. So it can be very difficult for another team to be doing anything. Um, and a lot of the time, I do like like maybe having a carpet on the floor, and then when based on like the info of the scout clearing it, because obviously once he clears every sticky, he's gonna want to peek, right? Otherwise, like, what are you clearing the sticks for? Um, so I like to try and time it so that when that scout has those sticks cleared, whoops, that sticky missed, um, you have some damage coming in that might just either catch them out because they overcommit, um, or maybe even knock them in, dealing a lot of damage, or just straight up kill them. Um, now, they won't always pressure saw, and if they are pressuring lower, it's a good idea to rotate uh, to lower and deny that focus on that and then have you know a soldier uh take care of saw so no one's getting or actually in some cases actually a scout uh like on shed or something watching saw basically point being someone is watching this now so that uh the bomb can't come from here unseen because of course the pressure is not going to come from here because the combo is already lower okay uh that's counter sack on snake water now let's talk about Pushing into second. So, because lower is so easy to get through um, just for your pressure, it's no surprise that it's very easy to get through with add as well. And yeah, so this is a very dryable door. Um, you do have to look out for all the normal threats like traps and like, you know, a sniper timing and the bomb. A lot of the time the soldier will be bombing when you're in yard. Um, and a lot of the time that might be coming from pipe or coming from a bridge high bomb or something. And most of the time, if their beam is like on bats with and everyone's like really passive, then yeah, by all means, this is a bomb that I turn to deal with uh, just because the other team is so far away that uh, they can't meaningfully pressure for the sack. And I usually do this by just kind of at a glance, reading where I expect their soldier to land, and then having a sticky there, or just like kind of stickying my med's feet, so that once that guy lands, uh, hopefully he dies as soon as possible and can't even get more rockets off. Uh, and once the sack is dealt with, or if they haven't sent the sack or aren't sending it, then yeah, stickying bats. This is one you actually have to charge a, a, quite a bit for, or like arc it a lot. It's very easy to, for the sticky to kind of just fall short. Um, but if you really put those sauce or put the sauce on those sticks bats, some people will be lingering, and uh, you can potentially catch them uh, leaving. And actually, this is kind of a point where you can catch a lot of players leaving. Like, if a soldier's lingering, like, on pipe or something, then having a sticky in lower or bridge or something. Like, just stickies on these doors uh, tend to get some picks, uh, from my experience. But of course, you want to be trapping these doors anyway, because, again... You just pushed into a new point, so you want to secure that new space for your team and uh, trap stuff out. Um, so that's drying through lower. You can dry through saw as well, which is also pretty straightforward. Um, it's a bit more enclosed, and you might have to worry about a soldier here. Um, potentially being a nuisance, and a lot of the time if you just like are able to commit past and actually get some positioning, then that becomes less and less of a threat as you're getting further and further away. Um, but yeah, it's just another point you dry push. Nothing too crazy. 
you just don't want to die to traps and um, things should be good. Now as far as popping into two goes, uh, one thing I should mention about the dry and which door to select, um, pretty much any time they have a forward spawn, I tend to just default go saw because it's already like usually easy enough to dry push. Um, but the threat of like a sniper in the forwards just makes a lower dry seem so terrible. Uh, Cause if they just have that sniper at all, then you might need to, you're, I don't know. It, it's either gonna slow you a lot because you're gonna need to get someone on the sniper. And if you can't, then you have to rotate out or it's just not worth, right? So I like going saw in those instances. And one other thing for the saw dry is I do like trapping this corner for the bomb because, you know, this kind of region is mostly where the soldier is going to want to be bombing you from uh, because, of course, you're the most enclosed there and the most vulnerable trying to get through. So just having the high bomb trapped or something um, will get you a lot of value. Uh, but yeah. Now, as far as popping through, that's pretty much exclusively saw because something like lower... And actually, another thing to mention is you can drop out window into lower um, in the cases where you might want to rotate uh, from one to the other. But uh, yeah, popping through lower is just so far away that there's really no benefit to popping through uh, versus saw. You're at least close enough. And for a saw pop through, um, you have the advantage of being able to try and cut off the other team bridge, if not just like land in a position to just wipe them on bats entirely. Um, so as far as pop throughs go, saw is definitely the, the go-to um, for, yeah, that. And then of course, communicate with your combo, what your intention is, whether you want to be chasing bridge and trying to catch people in lobby, or you want to be landing towards bats or, or what have you. Uh, but pretty straightforward stuff. Now let's talk Disadd on two. So disadd second, you pretty much, you could be playing to leave saw if you'd like. Um, lower gives you better vision, of course, and especially if you have stuff trapped, then you're gonna wanna be spotting it from lower in all likelihood. Um, again, you're so far away that you're not likely to get much value um, from spam unless you're using sticks. Um, and kind of the same applies to leaving saw. So very straightforward, not something you're gonna get a ton of spam on, um, but that's just because these points are so big and you of course can't run the risk of just being caught by being all the way pushed up on point or something where you can actually do something. Um, now sometimes you might end up being kind of close and you have to jump away, but I think in general, playing close, like playing to jump away, as in like playing close enough to actually get proper spam with the intention of jumping away to safety and not getting caught is insanely risky because all it takes is any amount of splash damage to knock your sticky and your bomb is ruined and you're now caught. Um, so I'm generally very averse to, to doing that and tend to just play the, the safer positioning. Um, yeah. So that's disad. Pretty simple. Uh, let's talk about evens on two. And we'll start off with pressuring into last. So, as far as pressuring into last goes, of course this doorway can be trapped, but I find like as long as you're taking it with this, like you're hugging this wall as you're peeking this, then you can, the demo would have to be blind deading you because he's not gonna see you. Um, and it's usually pretty safe. Like I always enter lobby this way and not only is this rarely trapped, because uh, in my opinion, it's just not a great trap because a lot of the teams will be entering from bats uh, who enter, you know, not through lower and they're just going to see it. But also it's just hard to see. So I don't know if I've ever died to a trap here and I've always entered this way. So I feel comfortable enough saying it's a fine thing to do. Um, and what else? So when you're in lobby, of course, you do have to worry about the defensive sniper peeking this and in some cases even peeking towards bats um, doing whatever but when you're in lobby you have a lot of options so you can be playing that uh, top left I talked about that top left pressure where you bomb the soldier through get the scout in uh, it's effectively a double sack um, just trying to overload that side really quickly and of course I always like to start off by air deading this uh, just so that 
my soldier doesn't get dead on and you know if traps get knocked to the floor my scout can understand like where maybe they can route around them or something or maybe they just get knocked off to the side and they're no longer a threat um and then of course i do like to peek this in pressure now i don't like I don't want to overcommit, of course, because I don't want to get caught to the demo that's actually playing this correctly and not focusing on the sack and instead just focusing on the pressure. Um, so you don't want to be caught out to that, but uh, it is worth pressuring in a lot of the time. If a demo turns or if they just get pushed back a little bit, like past that corner, you might be able to carpet this out and even like start to shoot the gun or something. Um, take that out and you get a lot of value. What other options are there? Um, a lot of the time, if like my soldiers are pressuring lower or something for the gun, then I'll still just watch top left. Uh, but if the combo wants to rotate over to right side, you can still watch top left or you can rotate with them. This shutter sucks to play from my experience because a soldier can just be like standing wherever and just hitting you for like 100 damage rockets um, or even like peaking drop or whatever. Um, just doing getting a ton of value. So it can be very tough um, doing much here. But you're mainly just looking for like damage, spam damage on the gun. If you if your team does properly like spam off the door, then you might be able to peek it a little bit. But uh, it's very easy to die in this doorway, uh, from my experience. So you have to be kind of careful about it. Um, but yeah, it's it's just looking for for pressure through these doors. Once you actually get space, like you can often find a lot of value just by shooting, you know, the important things. Taking out a gun, getting damage on the med, any any stuff like that, or just picks as well. Okay, um, what else? What else? Let's just talk counter sack. Uh, counter sack. I like to play bridge, and my main job is focusing on preventing their combo from entering lobby. So again, something like this, uh, and once they clear that, you know, that's an indication for when they're trying to peek and you might be able to get some damage or just hold the carpet or whatever. This is something, whoops, this is something you can be trapping. Um, you do have to worry about players from right lobby because that's a blind spot for you and a player could theoretically just be peeking this corner against you really quickly. Uh, so you do have to be mindful of that. But this is actually a area with where I'll like my beam being with me with the potential of playing an exchange. Um, demo exchanges are not very commonly seen, or at least like aggressive demo exchanges. I suppose like what is aggressive and defensive is kind of uh, ambiguous here because of course we are, you know, the team with control of two, we're the attacking team and we are the ones initiating it, but also we're on the back foot because we're like down players playing counter sack, but whatever. Um, you don't see demos initiating Uber exchanges that much, but uh, this is one example where you can. If they really just try and blow through lobby, then you can just spread a lot of damage on a lot of players and kind of just ruin the counter sack for them, uh, force them back to last. If you get any picks during that, then that's fantastic because you get to pressure last really hard with that pick, knowing that they don't have an Uber to use, etc., etc. Um, but in general, playing bridge and, you know, your heals could be elsewhere, not playing the exchange and you could just be playing to kite that back a bit. You do have to worry like a soldier could be skipping through lobby, getting cheese or something. And you might be like a vulnerable person over here. But uh, a lot of the time, as long as you're healthy and um, not getting too aggressive, then then bridge is, is kind of your go to door for the counter sack. And this is, of course, assuming, you know. You just sacked a soldier and a scout. If you're down more players, then there are other options between either leaving the point entirely or playing closer in exchange or what have you. Okay, that's counter sack. Uh, let's talk about pushing it to last, I think is the last thing. So as far as taking or pushing last, top left is kind of a go-to dry door. You might pop through if you're trying to play off of like build ad or something and you think they're going to be caught. Um, that's not a super uncommon occurrence and can work out quite nicely because of course you can be like trapping people out um, or just catching people who are playing to leave left spawn. But oftentimes this is kind of a designated dry door where you're trying to take some space before using and then oftentimes it's like around here you might be playing to use and then bomb across at the other team. Um, 
But of course, things can be trapped. The sniper is the big deal. This is also another reason why you would never want to even peek this first and let your other players do it. Um, because it's not uncommon for there to be a sniper here. In some cases, with the express purpose of denying the other team from from uh, just taking space in that door. Um, the kind of standard Uber is shutter. Um, so as far as a shutter Uber goes, I do like to have something to prevent a soldier from just raw peeking this uh, and getting a ton of damage, because that can just make the Uber worse if you're like, you know. If you're 150 HP going into the Uber and you aren't going to get flashed for very long, then you're just going to be less healthy in the post and it can suck and whatever. If I have the time, I like to have a stick or two up there. And then I also like to have a sticky here. Um, reason for this sticky is pretty much the rule of thumb as far as pushing or Ubering through a door goes, as far as the order goes. Um, I like, if it's an open door like this, I like demo first. Because demo often, uh, if your scout is first, it's going to be reacted to with some spam that might knock your sticky and make your bomb less successful. Uh, versus just getting through first, then that's usually less of a concern. And then shutters have a unique uh, trait to them, which is that they can just be trapped. Um, you can trap a doorway, but you're not going to see it um, if there's not the shutter. And the problem with that is that this trap pretty much, it, it exists with the potential of getting a kill, but more often than not, it's for the utility of knocking the Uber back um, and juggling players in so that the Uber's a lot worse. So, in cases with shutters, I like the default being lead on scout and have a sticky on the shutter so that when your scout peeks with the uber, you debt, knock any traps that might be here away, and then you get flash from behind and bomb in. Um, yeah, shutter's kind of like a go-to door for ubering. A lot of the time a gun might be... Um, on their right side, and that's an easy thing for you to get. And of course, you can be catching players as well with uh, with your bomb. Very easy to get reflashed uh, if you're just bombing right side, and you can be doing all sorts of things. And then from here, depending on if you took extra time to take out the gun or catch players or what have you, you might not want to cross. But if it was very fast, um, on this side, then yeah, by all means, you should be looking to cross and ending on left side. Locking down left spawn or getting any picks that are, are lingering here. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the shutter Uber. Now, the other door you can use through is through lower. Now, lower serves well as a fast transitional door off of like just a second cap. You immediately drop down, get ready to, t to use through lower. Um... And it can be useful as a more, uh, or like a slowed down door. Usually, at least my team would default to shutter, but uh, I me mean, lower is, is also um, perfectly fine for, for like a push that you have time to spot with and everything. But with lower, you can bomb to either side. So it's important just at a moment's notice to see which, like what important stuff is happening on each side and bomb to that so if i hear like you know medic calls or something on one side then i'm more likely to bomb to that side or like maybe an i hear an ng building a gun on the right side i'm going to want to go to that versus if i see their combo like by truck or something i'm going to go i'm going to want to be bombing the left side but just at a moment's notice you want to be deciding which side to go to and also calling that but uh from lower you can very easily bomb quite deep on either side and be mindful as well you can over bomb from lower because it is a bit of a walk um for your medic and scout to catch back up to you so you know you don't want to be bombing into your death and ruining the uber but you do want to be bombing something important uh bombing demos bombing medics taking out guns all the important things that uh, you do with an uber um getting picks on just anyone um 
that's all going to influence your decision of what side to bomb. Usually, just rule of thumb, if you know what side their combo's on, then you want to bomb that side. Um, just basic stuff. But uh, yeah, it's very communication here is very important because it's very easy for the demo to bomb one side because he saw one thing and then the scout goes to the other side because he sees something else. And then because the combo is disconnected, the medic doesn't know who to go save and then someone dies and then the push is ruined. So just being very communicative in those uh, situations and also listening to what uh, your, your combo partner is saying um, helps avoid stuff like that. Okay, um, that is, well, and that's the initial uber. Of course, like, late uber stuff, um, or late push stuff still applies, so whichever side you're ending on, it's nice to have the point trapped if you can, or excuse me, the, the shutter trapped if you can, um, but you're still, l like, playing for a commit, so you want to be reloading ammo, um, and during a cross just eating or doing a ton of damage. On, like, a right side end... A lot of the time, players will be in this little choke, especially like the heavy is going to be revving around here, and you can be just sinking this and just getting a ton of damage and a ton of value. Um, one huge, massive no-no, just don't ever do it, and invite teams do this, and it loses them like pushes and stuff. Just don't end here. I know it feels like you can kind of shoot everything and do everything from here versus, you know, if you're pushed up right, you can't really shoot into their spawn necessarily. Um, you're allowing them some space by truck. But this positioning is just so much better. Likewise, this positioning is just so much better than being on the low ground where you can get shot from everywhere. Just don't end on the low ground. Um, ever. <laughs> you, you really want to avoid it whenever you can. Uh, but yeah, like after the commit, I mean, you if there's an opportunity to be playing point, then you can be trapping that off for your scout, getting them to play it, or just whoever. Um, and yeah, you can just be playing to, to deny that cap, get getting picks, killing everyone, uh, and good things. Uh, so yeah, that's pushing last. Um, I think that might be it for basic like positionings and kind of objectives for all the different points. So, let's talk about sticky traps to finish off here. So, we'll go from last on onwards. So, starting on last, um, I already showed off some of the traps that you can sort of clip stickies into. I suppose that's not so great, but uh, you could be doing it like here, and this guy wouldn't really see it. Um, stuff like that. You know, people trap this kind of stuff. Um, just whatever you want to do. Uh, you definitely need traps on the point on disad. But some good accessory traps. This is a, a quite a nice one, because not only can you spot it from the spawn, uh, but that's just a position that a lot of people would like to take a post. Like, if I use through shutter, and I'm trying to catch someone, and then, like, whatever, or maybe I have to take out the gun or whatever, okay, Uber's over, and I'm, like, here, roughly. It's not un unfounded for me to want to be crossing here, only to, like, die to that, or something like that, right? Not me, me, because I don't die to traps. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that that's a good trap that uh, will get value as a nice accessory trap to the point. Um, other stuff, I have gotten some value with something like this, or just, like, trying to punish the dry aggression. Um, peaking that, you can mess around with cones. Something like this can be nice for not only, like, a, a better... Uh, reaction time for a soldier getting through on last, but also for a team trying to dry push, they might only clear the door, which again, a door, a trap on the door and just deading on the guy through would be nice. Um, but a team that uh, got through this and, and didn't see anything might uh, end up dying to something like this. I know like in the past, you could actually trap like through these cracks. I don't think that's the case anymore, most likely. Um, yeah, stuff like that is nice. Um, and again, a trap on shutter, like three sticks there, five sticks on the point. You are, 
you are left with the difficult decision of do I debt those and give up my traps on point. Uh, but a lot of the time juggling the uber can be nice. And sometimes you might just get a pick with it, right? Uh, but those are the main disad last traps I can think of. Um, yeah, so let's talk evens on last. I mean, bucket trap can be quite nice. Just traps on the doors are good. If you have the time in lobby, there's all sorts of different like lobby traps you can be setting up. Um, oh, one for disad last that is really important to mention is traps in lower. Because a lot of the time teams will enter through lower lobby. Um, and it's oftentimes the safest way to l enter through lower. Um, so traps on the door might be an easy way to get a pick because it's just very difficult to avoid that. You don't have to spot it yourself either. Like a soldier can be spotting this for you. But one I'm a big fan of that you can spot for yourself is actually on this pillar. Um, so something like that is, you know, not something that the other team's going to see. And a lot of the time the routing for a team will be you enter lower and then you walk up to shutter, right? For your shutter uber. So you, as the demo, can actually be pretty much perfectly safe and spotting that cross through lower and timing that debt. Um, so that's something that has gotten me a few drops uh, in this recent er season. Um, and there's just all sorts of things you can do in the lobby. Just all sorts of little things that could be trapped. Um, of course, spotting it is the challenge, but uh, I've, I've shown some of the, the consistent ones that I like. Um, so yeah. What else, what else, what else? Let's talk about disad on two, where there's, again, a lot of traps. So traps on the doors are nice. One that I'm also a big fan of and has also gotten a lot of drops is this bad boy, which takes advantage of the fact that the in the recent version of snake water you used to be able to trap these beams right which you know was valuable in and of itself but then they lowered the clipping of the entire ceiling down so now these stickies just float uh, but it does have the added benefit of they kind of float inside the light fixture so this is a really nice one of course this functions as well um, and i've actually seen on counter sack someone using this um which again I think less good. I want to be setting that at like this angle. Crit particles. Yeah, that that is quite nice. And they're not really going to notice that um, until it's too late. So being able to trap around these lights just using perspective and that ceiling clipping can be quite nice. I've seen people trap this. It's okay. Uh, people like to trap the rock. Um, I think the rock, tra <laughs> rock trap is really bad. It's funny. Like it's charming. And it has... Um, it's had its day, like, it's it's an old school one, but uh, a lot of the time when you're routing through lower, like, you don't even walk towards it. Plus, like, I don't have much else to look at when I walk through other than, like, here, positioning and, like, I don't know. Stuff like this is not terrible, like, these don't have clipping in them, and sometimes teams will take this a little further back, um, so that can get value. Um, just corners here and there. I've actually gotten, like, kills with just random stuff there. That was back when I played, like, main, though. I don't know if that would be the case anymore. I'm a big fan of trapping the pack and disad, because not only is it really easy to do when you're just backing up to bats, um, but it's usually easy to time a debt just based on context. Um... A lot of the time, a soldier might get through lower and just immediately go to it and you can kill them. And a lot of the time, when you're kiting, you might even be able to just spot a little bit, have an idea of someone who's like going towards the pack approximately. And that's just a pack that people are... Someone is going to take that pack whenever a team tries into this point. Because there's, there's going to be a soldier that wants a pack or a medic that wants a pack or just someone is going to want to take it. Uh, it's just a matter of can you catch the context for who's getting it uh, and time the deck correctly. So trapping the pack can be quite nice. Um, I do like something like this can be nice. Whoops. Because, um, again, soldiers would like to land on bats a lot of the time. And being able to kill them is nice. I've actually killed demos with this as well who have been, like, super deep bombing. Uh, what else? What else? You can just be trapping the backside of anything. I think this... There's, like, some weird clipping stuff around here. I think I found it, yeah. I don't... Yeah, it's hidden. But actually, this would be good at um, 
getting the players that are transitioning from point to lower if they're trying to take that uber, so that could be nice. Um, just trapping the backside of this to try and... This, of course, is useless against the team that's pushing from lower, but uh, players pushing from saw won't see that. Same deal applies to something like this, which is a common spot. As far as trapping saw itself goes, these beams don't have any clipping to them, and you can actually just uh, use perspective to your advantage to obstruct the trap. And this works on both of them, of course. Um, and that can be quite nice, or just trapping this corner. Um, what else? What else? There are a lot of them, right? You, This can be trapped on either side. So you could theoretically make the case for trapping this disad 2 or just playing 2 or something. But uh, there's usually better options. And then trapping like a high bomb is not a terrible idea either. Because a lot of the time soldiers will want to be high bombing. And remember, like traps... You're not going to be able to drop the medic every time. And just getting a pick um, can be quite valuable in and of itself. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff for two. Like, there's some perspective stuff going on with this ramp. Might be a little hard to see the sticks until you're already kind of committed or just trapping like the wall or something. Again, there's there's going to be a ton of traps here on second, but uh, those are some of the, the decent ones for um, when a team is pushing and kind of explaining why it might be uh, good. So let's talk about traps on mid. So if the other team's trying to push into mid, um, there are a lot of options. So catwalk is nice. And for a lot of these traps, I'll probably make a separate video about this, actually. Like, this catwalk trap will just drop medics, right? Um, this trap will just drop medics, right? But you don't always have the time to be standing here setting this and then getting back to safety, right? So these, these do depend on your timing a lot. Um, so just be conscious of that. Because yes, while this might be like... In a sense, objectively more potent once it's actually set compared to something like just this. That's much easier to set and, you know be safe while setting it than the catwalk trap is so you know this might actually be more common rather than less uh but anyway uh what else do we have here on mid i'm not opposed to to trapping this corner and trying to get a pick on players up there that's not terrible it's just hard to spot that corner itself from where you're standing um can be tough big fan of trapping kitchen just the top of the stairs here again a perspective trap that uh if the team pushes this with the intention to take Uber just too aggressively, or even just like a flank member trying to push through um, without properly like jump spotting it first, then you might be able to kill them. Uh, likewise, I suppose you could be even be trapping deep in kitchen because this is just not a doorway that people check because <laughs> they never expect it to be trapped. Um, yeah, that lower trap I was showing earlier. This can be quite nice because a lot of the time teams will be entering lower uh, here rather than wide, so while here they might see it uh, entering lower from here, they are not going to. You can trap this bucket as well. This also has no collision on it. Um, and that works on not only holding two, um, but also holding mid. Um, hmm. Yeah, just any any doorway of course works. You know, trapping. I think there are traps that you can set that hit both uh, catwalk and lower. Um, this is probably an example. Yeah. So that works. What else? What else? You can be trapping deep in saw. Something I've actually showcased before is having the trap on the pillar and then the basic, like, <laughs> the alarm stickies. So when a scout clears these, that usually means they're under this trap um, can be a nice, funny gimmick. Uh, but just trapping doorways is a solid idea. Uh, just trapping stuff side of this box can be nice. Either side, really, because some players will just peek this uh, close and then be within range. I've actually gotten kill kills with that very recently, and that's like the first time in a long time because it just feels very bad to me. But actually, I don't know if there's clipping on. Would that hit someone in the... Oh, it does. Okay, that's actually pretty valuable then. 
I didn't uh, realize. And if that's the case, I might actually want to trap the entire front. Um, oh, that even hit me there. Okay, that's that's not bad at all then. Um, yeah. And then I've like done, I've gotten kills with stuff like this, but again, it's just like you can get kills with stickies anywhere. <laughs> um, so I don't think these traps have like particular unique merits other than like, yeah, you're not really going to see them if you're capping point and you might be able to catch a lucky blind at timing, but it's not going to be particularly consistent. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for mid. Uh, one other thing is I do enjoy trapping that on occasion if I have traps elsewhere that I'm trying to spot from kitchen because this is just an intuitive thing to spot from kitchen. Um, that's going to be a little harder to spot from saw. So let's talk about traps on two then. The other team's two, if it's disad. And there are a lot of good options here. So just trapping bats and trusting your reaction time is a good way to just get kills. Um, I suppose you could be trapping this as well for kind of that secondary layer that's easier. Because not only is it deeper in, so you can uh, not have to worry about your reaction time so much, but uh, it might, might not get spotted. Uh, speaking of not getting spotted, this really never gets cleared uh, unless the other team sees me set it. And that can be quite nice. Now, the big downside of this is it doesn't hit someone who's, like, close to the edge here on bats. They have to be standing further back. Um, but that can be valuable. You can be trapping this as well for any player that either is peeking over the edge or drops off or even if they're trying to go down the ramp, it can hit them. Um, again, trapping the pack can be quite nice. And usually if it's disad, actually, I like to trap it this way. Um just so you have a little bit of that perspective going for you. Um, and I'm a big fan of this because, again, a lot of people will gravitate towards that pack at some point. And especially if, like, someone gets good damage on the med as they're trying to dry, then you can be kind of... You don't see it exactly, but you can be spotting through this. And plus, like, even if they don't go to the pack, this is a normal route for someone to take, and that would hit it. Uh, trapping the side... Yeah, the size of the boxes as well can be valuable. Um, this is definitely more valuable on disad 2 than on holding your own 2. Um, just because a team might be trying to push bridge and then um, stuff like that. Of course, traps on the door itself are always great. Um, what else is there on 2? Like traps in lobby, if you are able to set them up, can be valuable. Something like that can potentially uh, kill a player. I'm sure there's stuff you could do cheese. Um, I'm thinking that's probably all the, the main ones that uh, I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there, there are more. But uh, yeah, I don't think, I mean, last, you're not really going to have time to set up traps in that sense. Um, these are more pick traps for disad situations or at least when you're conceding space, whether that be uh, giving up space after counter sacking or if it's this ad, right? So I think that's it for traps and that's probably it for the video then. Snake water taken care of. Uh, hopefully that was informative for you guys. How long did this end up being? Hour 20, not as bad actually as I thought it might have been. Uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed and see you later.